Welcome everyone and welcome Eleni. Welcome, welcome to my house. Pleasure to be here. Eleni has very generously invited us into her home today to share a very special Cypriot Greek recipe called Chef Thales. Eleni's background is Cypriot and she's a wonderful ambassador for Cypriot Greek food. Eleni, what does Cypriot Greek food mean to you? Um, uh, Greek food and Greek Cypriot food mean uh, family, uh, togetherness, a lot of uh, family functions, um, a lot of opportunities for us to share a meal together. I was born here and then we moved to Cyprus when I was only um, three. So my mother has 14 uh, siblings all together from my mum's side and nine of them are, are girls. So you can imagine when we would get together how many, um, how much food there was would be uh, prepared. And as, as a young kid myself, I was I was in such an awe of how they would work together uh, to prepare this meal. That after that we would all sit down and, and enjoy. Yeah. So I guess that's that's where I, I got my passion from, and I, I really didn't have any any hope to do otherwise. <laughs> I can totally see how that would happen with uh, nine aunts all uh, working yes. together, creating these beautiful family mm -hmm. feasts. It would have been an amazing time. Oh, beautiful, beautiful times. You love Greek Cypriot food so much that you also have channeled your love for this food into a blog called My Family's Food Diary. Eleni shares her recipes with beautiful step-by-step -step instructions and lots of cooking tips and your own beautiful photography. Tell me about your blog. Thank you. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been a year that I've started nearly the, the blog and it's been such a, uh, a fun time getting, um, getting creative with that side, but also sharing my recipes, the recipes that I, I've developed, the recipes that I've been cooking for my own family. I love people um, making my recipes and um, especially the separate food, just them sending me photos of what they make, it just makes my heart melt. Who taught you how to make the Chef Dagues? Oh, my, um, my friend Vasiliki taught me how to make this. So Vasiliki was um, a Cypriot who came here to study with her, with her partner. And um, they, they were here for three, four years and she taught me how to make this. We would make this together all the time uh, and then all of our friends would come over and we would enjoy the food together, uh, followed by music because her, her husband's a musician. So we would just sit there all night just enjoying. Um, wow. Beautiful, yeah. and this is a traditional family recipe for her as well. Yes, yeah, her mum. Yeah, yeah, her mum showed it to her. And okay. She, she, I think she actually might have skyped her, and then she gave us the recipe for us to make. Yeah, oh, beautiful! So, yeah, the yeah. modern sharing of recipes. <laughs> Skype, FaceTime. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start making chef that yesterday and inspiring people to make this special dish too. Um, what are chef thalias? Tell me about them. Um, so chef thalias are a traditional Cypriot um, dish, uh, like a Cypriot uh, sausage. They are made with minced pork mince and they're wrapped in cork fat, or otherwise we call it banda. Um, and then they're usually typically cooked over the, the charcoal. Yeah. Okay, so core fat is actually the um, fat that surrounds the organs in the abdomen. And we use that in this recipe instead of the synthetic sausage casing. Mm. And um, it is a really beautiful element to this dish. So where do you get um, the core fat from? Uh, you get it from um, the butcher. It is, I, I think that the hardest part about this recipe is actually getting this cold fat. We usually just go to the one butcher. We order it or he usually also has it frozen in his freezer. It's not, it's, it is rarely that I do get the fresh banna. It's usually always um, frozen. Yes, um, which is fine because you can just fine. defrost yeah, it. Yeah, that's right, it's, it's fat. So you just defrost it and then um, use it okay. to wrap the, the sausage. Let's make a start. And what do, you, what do we do with the core fat? So the first thing we need to do is wash it and rinse it very, very well. Okay. Um, and then give it a, a very good rinse with just water. And then we're going to soak it with water and vinegar. And vinegar, okay. Yep. It does have a little bit of an odour, kind of like a a butcher shop odour yeah. um, and it's got a little bit of blood as well so we're just going to rinse all that off and at the moment it's kind of pink yeah. but once it's been rinsed and soaked it's going to go white. white. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Well, let's do it. So see here, these pieces we won't be able to use. Yes. If it's got a so. hole in it, we won't be able to use that section. Yeah. Okay. Basically, we've just taken the core fat that we've had defrosting in the fridge overnight and we've placed it in cold water and very, very gently agitated it to help it pull apart, come apart. We then drain the water out of the bowl and refill it again. And how many times do we do that? 
feeling? Um, at least three or four times okay. where until the, you no longer see any blood in the water okay. and the smell just begins to fade away. Okay, yeah. good. Eh? Yeah, so see now that the water is getting clearer, so this is probably um, the fifth time that I've had to change okay. the water. And, and maybe the last or second last time, do you think? Yeah, probably second last. Okay, yeah. all right. So we've rinsed it many, many times until the water in the bowl looks perfectly clear and isn't sort of that sort of the colour of pale blood. And then we add fresh cold water and a little bit of vinegar. So what does the vinegar actually do? Um, it's used to get rid of the smell, the, the, the last bit of odour, but also to kill off any um, germs that there may okay. um, be remaining yeah, okay. from the butcher shop. All right. Okay, and we leave it for how long? Uh, probably 15 or so minutes, and okay. then um, by that time, by the time you, you prep all the, the parsley and the onions that you'll need for the yes, meat, yes. then this will be really ready to go. Used. So your husband Theo is going to help us with the barbecue today. Yes, that's right. He's the, he's the expert for the outside, I'm the expert for the cooking inside. <laughs> that's beautiful. That sounds like a beautiful division of labour. <laughs> all right, let's go and find Theo. He's got to get our barbecue going. Yeah. All right. Set up your kindling, newspaper and dry wood in the barbecue. Place a large amount of charcoals on a wire rack and place this directly on the kindling. Okay, our core fat has been set aside to soak and the barbecue has been set up by Theo, but the fire hasn't been lit yet. That's gonna happen a bit further down the track. And we're now gonna actually prepare the mince meat that goes inside our chef Douglas, inside our sausages. Eleni, what do we do first? Uh, so first we're going to have to cut the onions um, and the parsley. It should be cut fine enough, not too, too small. You want to be able to see it um, in the mixture, but you don't want to see chunks of the onion and the parsley. Um, and then we're just going to mix everything together. And once that's done, start wrapping. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's okay. go. <laughs> When we mix all the ingredients in, you want to be able to see the green and and the onions. So that's how you'll know that you've added a lot. <laughs> Enough. And you want just the right the right colour balance between the, the pink of the mincemeat, the green of the uh, parsley and the white of the onions. Yeah. Got that beautiful, the perfect harmony of the three colours. That's it, yep. Alright, so here we have now. We're just going to add all the ingredients in. So we have okay. um, three kilos of pork mince, which Good will go into the bowl. Okay. Very elegant way. Yeah. Okay. And the um, salt and pepper. So we've got two tablespoons of um, salt and a tablespoon of pepper. That's a really good mix. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got the 30 mils of White wine. Gouda. And what else do we have? We have the two teaspoons of um, cinnamon. And two tablespoons of dry mint. So all the ingredients are um, nicely mixed together. Yeah, it's gonna cook up so beautifully. <laughs> yeah. Eleni has beautifully made the mincemeat filling and it smells amazing. It's going to barbecue up so well. Can't wait. And we've also had the core fat that's been sitting um, to the side and just soaking and the odour has basically dissipated and the blood has leached out of the, um, the membranes and the fat as well. So all we need to do now is just rinse it off, mm -hmm. strain it off, rinse it off and then start cutting it and um, wrapping the mincemeat with it. Perfect. All right. Yep. So the first step is to carefully get uh, one of the pieces. You want to try and get uh, a piece that is whole without putting any holes through it. This one is actually quite long, so it's going to put it on the board. Okay. Um, and then while I do this, Christine is going to be making the, um, the 
sausages. The sausages, yeah, okay. the mix. Yeah. The, <laughs> the mince, mince filling. Uh, We're going to yeah, shape the filling into yeah. the sausages. <laughs> so I'll be wrapping Christine with before me the, the okay. mince. Um, it usually we put about 70 grams, which we sort of just have a little quick with about a packed third cup. Of packed one third cup. So basically I'm just going to use a third cup measure and I'm just going to take some minced meat and pack it firmly into this third cup measure and then we know that we have the right amount of minced meat because we want all of them to be the same shape, same size so that they barbecue evenly. Let's see, yeah. And so they look good too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that, that's actually a Is really that good the right size. size? Yes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So then we lay it down. Lay it down. And then you wrap it around. And then it will automatically stick. You don't actually have to do much with the okay. with So I've sort of gone around uh, one and a half times. It's a really delicate operation. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's quick. It's You don't have to do anything else to it. So That's amazing. And that? That's it. And that will stay. It will stay. And there it is, beautiful. Yeah. Our first beautiful mm -hmm. chef tallant. So that's kind of the point of using this, this core fat. Basically you've got the fat that's in this membrane and that fat renders out during the barbecuing process and you don't actually have it. You don't feel it as a texture no. in, the, in the final chef tallant, but you can, um, taste, but you can taste it because the fat has basically gone into the meat and has made it really mm. juicy and delicious. You prefer the I finer prefer fat, the finer. the finer fat like, yeah, that, like that, rather than the Bigger. the heavier fat, yes. like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we won't be using that one, yeah, but we will that. be using the finer one. Yeah. Can you use this mincemeat mixture just to make meatballs and just you know? Oh, oh yeah, sure. You can just um, oh, you probably won't be able to barbecue it though. It, it will fall off yep. the, the forks or yes. But yeah, you can bake it or, or fry it or shallow fry it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so now it's time to actually light our barbecue, and that way the coals will be just right to barbecue these chef yes. Wow! Look at that. One amazing tray full of chef tallies that now need to be put onto barbecue forks and there's a whole art to that as well. So we're going to bring Theo in and he's going to do the skewering and then from there he's going to do the barbecuing as well. All right, let's okay. All right, so Theo has very adeptly skewered the chef tallies onto these barbecue forks. These barbecue forks have three tines on them and the chef tallies had to be long enough to be able to go through the three tines, but not so long that they hang over and then they might actually fall apart during the barbecuing. Um, these tines are kind of flexible. Oopsie, these, kind, these tines are a little bit flexible as well and during the cooking process, they might actually expand and again, shred apart the chef tallies. So Theo has added some firm sausage at the end of the um, array, so as that the tines stay firm in one place using some Kransky, some chorizo, or some Cypriot sausage if we want to stay in theme here. Um, so now these are ready to be barbecued. Once the charcoals glow orange-white, Allow them to sit for five minutes before barbecuing the chef tallies. If you place the chef tallies on the barbecue any sooner, you risk burning them on the outside and they remain uncooked inside.
Okay, I need to let you know that I've already sneaked a taste <laughs> earlier um, when they were just coming off the barbecue because I couldn't wait. And the Chapeliers have a beautiful infusion of the spice and the herbs in them. They are just absolutely amazing. And now we've like. Oh, sing <laughs> more Emmys. And Mr. Kana. We made these and we did a fantastic job. Uh, we've now um, assembled them into these beautiful bites with all sorts of condiments and salads <laughs> and just elevated them to a whole nother level. Um, Eleni, thank you so very, very much oh, for sharing your home, your recipe and all your energies today. This is a beautiful recipe and one that I'm sure many people will be inspired, especially me, um, to remake. Oh, fantastic. I'm glad to hear. Yes. So I, I, I'm very, very grateful that you, you came with your, with your crew today to, um, to film this recipe. Thank you uh, very, very much. Um, I, I truly hope that people at home will make this recipe. And not just this, other secret cooking um, help keep it going, keep it maintained um, throughout generations so we don't lose all, the, all our um, beautiful recipes from our island. And um, yeah, Galeorixi. <laughs> Galeorixi. Uh, can I second that? I sincerely hope. Close <laughs> looking I sincerely second that and I um, truly hope that the diaspora from Cyprus and from Greece as well uh, embraces its culinary heritage and keeps these wonderful recipes alive. Um, Eleni has a wonderful blog with lots of recipes on it. Please go to her blog, My Family's Food Diary, and have a look at her um, wonderful selection of recipes and go ahead and make them and don't forget to take photos of them and send them to her because that melts her heart. Yes. Let's, yes. Mel uh. let's melt her heart in a good way. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank Eleni. Kaliorixi. Kaliorixi. Kaliorixi.